What's up guys? It's Code Phony here and today we're going to be doing PSET 3 plurality and we're going to be doing it in the easiest way humanly possible and let's get right to it. Right as you can see I passed all of the conditions reject 50 and we're going to start from scratch. So I like to break down my problems into main problems and then sub problems before I do any programming. So the two main problems would be vote counting and then finding the number highest number of votes. So if we break down the vote counting into its own sub problems, we have we have to count votes of each candidate and for each count and for each vote count an n number of times, n being the number of candidates. So let's say we have three candidates, we'll have to count the, their votes three times. So I like to start with pseudocode, and I like to break down my uh, problems into two main problems and then sub-problems after, afterwards so that we can really get a grasp of the situation. And then we don't just start coding randomly. So the two main problems would be vote counting and then finding the highest number of votes. So as for the vote sub-problems, we have to count votes for each candidate and we have to count votes for an n number of times, n being the number of votes that the user gives us. So when we see an n number of times for a problem, I would normally suggest a loop. We must also check the candidate name given by the user to see if it's a match for any of our other candidates. And this can be pretty easily done with structs, and which we already have provided. And then we have the print winner function, where we must check our candidate vote numbers an n number of times. So in here being the number of candidates that we have. And as we check the vote tallies, we have to save the top candidate each time to find a candidate with a higher vote. We also have to make sure to print all the winners, even in cases of a tie. So let's get started. Here we have just some declarations of variables and of the struct. It really sets the, the stage for us to work with. Here we have a, a a struct called candidate that we can work with and then they already pre-make us a list of these candidates with using the max number nine so it's going to be a max number of nine candidates in the list and uh, then this is the number of candidates that the user is providing us that's the candidate count and we get that by asking the user how many candidates we get the candidate count by taking the number of candidates in the string that they provide us and then we just minus one. We don't count the, the slash plural, plurality argument. And this is just checking the num that we have at least um, one candidate. Then here, we're going to start going in and setting each candidate in the list. So let's say we have Joe and Mary. It'll be Joe, set his, set his name to Joe, set his votes to zero and then go to Mary, set her name to Mary, and then set her votes to zero. Then we're gonna loop over all the voters. So each time so each time the user votes, it's, they're gonna type in Joe, and then it's gonna use the vote function, and if it's an invalid vote, it'll say so. If not, it'll add one to his vote count, and then it's gonna move on to the next name on the list, like the next input, so if the next input is Mary, then it's going to do the same thing. It's going to check to see if it Mary matches the candidate list, and then it's going to increment Mary's vote by one. And then we're just going to print the winner. So first things first, we're going to work on the vote function. So the vote function is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a, mostly a big for loop. And we're going to take an int and to, to keep track of the for loop, and I'm going to name it current candidate. And I'm going to copy that because it's a pretty long variable name, but it's just to make it really simple for you. So we're going to keep it at zero. For, we're going to declare it at zero first to start at the beginning of the list. And then as long as current candidate, I can just paste, is less than candidate count. And then we're going to iterate for each for each time we go through. We're going to increment current candidate each time we go through the loop. 
So C, like a lot of other programming languages, has um, functions already built into the library. And one of them is string compare. And what we're going to do here is each time, each time we go through this loop, we're going to use string compare and compare the, the current candidate in the list that we're looking at to the, the string name here that we're given through the vote function. So up here, the user is going to give us who they're voting for right here. And then they're going to feed it to us here. So name, we're going to use it here. So if string compare name is equal to, is uh, we're going to feed string compare two arguments. It's going to be name and candidates, current candidate dot name. And if that returns a zero, then we know that the two are the same. That the name that the user gave us, let's say Joe, matched the candidate on the list, one of the candidates on the list. So if it's true, then we just then we just increment candidates. by one. And then we have to return true. We return true because that way this won't go into the invalid vote uh, if statement. So that's it for the vote function. Now we're going to move on to the print winner function. So here we're going to have to keep track of the candidate with the highest number of votes. So to do that, we're going to declare a variable top candidate number of votes. So we, we need to keep track of the number of votes, not the candidate name, because there can be a tie. So let's say we have two people with two votes each. Then we have to be able to find both of them in, in the candidate's list. So while current candidate is less than candidate count, oh. and then we have to remember to increment current candidate. And I like to do it before I do any of the logic inside, just so I don't forget. It's a really easy thing to forget. So in within this while loop, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting the top candidate number of votes. So all we have to do is check if top candidate number of votes. And that's actually pretty long, so I'm going to copy that one for later use. It's less than um, candidates current candidate dot votes then what we're going to do is we're going to set it to that uh, we're going to set top candidate number of votes to candidate to the current candidate that we're looking at Okay, then now, now we now we have this while loop here. It's going to give us the the top. Uh, so now that we have this while loop here, it's going to give us the top candidate number of votes. So once now that we have that number, we have to loop through the list of candidates and print out every time we hit that number, we find a candidate with that number of votes. So we're going to use the for loop here, and since I already, already declared current candidate up here. I can just reset it right here. So as long as current candidate is less than uh, candidate count, and then iterate, I oh, know, increment. I keep saying iterate. <laughs> So 
So here, all you have to do is check if candidates, current candidate votes is equal to the top candidate number of votes. It's going to print F string new line um, candidates is going to take from the candidates list at the on the current candidate candidate that we're looking at and we're going to take the name and just print and plug it into the printf and that should do it let's see if i have to have any typos all right so i'm going to do check 50 here to make sure everything's good oh and as i press check 50 i, I noticed that that slash in was a, a forward slash it needs to be a backslash in so i'm gonna it's gonna fail here and I'm going to try again. Make plurality. Check 50. Seems like those little things can throw it all off. All right, there we go. It passed. And I'm going to be providing this code in my CodePhony GitHub. And if you have a better solution, you know, feel free to leave it down in the comments. It helps anyone who watches this video later on, because a lot of people check the comments and they see a better solution or they see something that clicks better with them, you know. And my main priority is just to make sure that you understand what's going on and how these basic program concepts come together. And we can really use all those basic tools later on. And that's what's really important. So if you like this video, hit give me a like and subscribe maybe, and I would really appreciate it. And uh, see you next time. This is Code Funny out. Peace.